Hey everyone, Tommy J here and welcome to my new series, I Show You Games. This series is intended to give you a general impression of a game so you can decide whether or not it is worth your time and or money, with some of my own opinions thrown in. Today I am here to show you Thomas Was Alone, a puzzle platformer developed by Mike Bethel in his off time while working at Bossa Studios, which is a game development studio. So the options for this game are available outside of it, and there's resolution, windowed mode, and then there are six uh, graphics quality presets, which range from fastest to fantastic. Now I'm playing this on fantastic just to give you an idea of what it looks like. There's also an input option, uh, which lets you change the controls and up to two keys can be bound to any control. So that's nice. That's really good in a game like this. So you can play with whatever keys you want in game. The settings are just volume sliders, so you've got volume, sound effects, and music volume. And the menu is just navigated using W and S for up and down, so WASD are the controls, or the arrow keys. Now, it's worth mentioning that this is a very, very story-driven game, and I've played through a little bit of it just to get the hang of it. And since it is so story-driven, I'm going to try and be quiet while the narrator's talking because he's such a big part of the game and you'll you'll see why you'll understand in a little bit so let's do it alone. Well, a weird first thought to have. So as you can see, typical puzzle platformer, just movement keys with jump, just WASD, and pause menu. Let's keep going. Thomas decided to start listing his observations for posterity. One, the whole alone thing. Two, portals. They led somewhere. He'd yet to work out where. Three, falling. Thomas was absolutely fantastic at falling. He was almost as good at falling as he was at observing. So yeah, I'll just stop at the end of the level to make sure all the narration plays through if I happen to finish before then. Just so you don't miss any. Okay, interesting. Thomas couldn't fall past this block. Think, damn it, think. What if there was some kind of inverted fall? Some way to, what's the word? Jump. It worked. Thomas had solved the great inverted fall mystery. <laughs> so there is a lot of humor in this game and the narrator is there to give this character life because if you think about it, it's just a block. A big jump. But Thomas noted there was no real danger in missing it. The world didn't want him to fail here. It was pushing him, but gently. And yeah, as you can see, getting progressively more difficult, adding new ideas, things like that. But we are in the tutorial this levels. This all seemed a little dangerous. The world was not to be trusted. It was unstable, and it seemed to Thomas that it could let him down at any moment. He was starting to suspect it might even be doing so on purpose. Nah. Paranoia. Thomas wondered whether the portals were actually taking him anywhere. He felt like he was making progress, but there wasn't really any way to know. He seemed to be moving predominantly up and to the right, which might, or might not, be important. So before we move on, just because the narration will keep going, I'm just going to talk quickly about the narrator. Now his name is Danny Wallace, and he is a very unique individual. Yeah. Wow, words. Individual. He does many things. Like, his jobs have ranged from having roles on television as a presenter or host to being a writer, reasonably successful as well, and doing voice acting in several games, such as Assassin's Creed. He started with Assassin's Creed 2, and I believe he did three others after that. So yeah, he, he is, he is good. 
And you know what? I think he fills the role of narrator in this game perfectly. He just has the perfect voice for it. It might have been paranoia again, but Thomas could have sworn the world was becoming more complicated. It always seemed to be one step ahead of his skills. It had been designed just for him. He wondered why. Was the world testing him? No. Too obvious. And on the note of uh, narration, we may as well talk about sound as well. Now, the sound in this game is done by David Houston, I believe. H-O-U-S-D-E-N is his last name. And I highly recommend looking him up if you do like this music, because he's won many awards, some of them for this game, uh, for the music in this game, and they're well-deserved. He is, he is very, very good. So yeah, just remember, listen to the music as well as the narration, just while it's happening, because it is phenomenal. Something about the boiling, toxic, glowing water intimidated Thomas. He didn't like it. He certainly didn't want to swim in it. He made another mental note. Four, water. Not good to be avoided. So yeah, the reason I jump back in is just look at that little death animation. It's so smooth and it looks almost like fish food just falling to the bottom of the tank. It's really interesting. And graphically, this game is actually surprisingly impressive if you think about it. The loneliness was getting to Thomas. No amount of observation or obsessive note-taking could combat that. So, if you think about it, the, uh, the aesthetic, while simple, is really, really nice. Each level, if you, well, you, you've probably noticed, has its own little light source. So in this level, it's in the center, and everything draws a shadow, and the shadows are done very, very smoothly, and it looks really, really impressive. And then you've got your backgrounds, and again, while simple, they do have this animation to them. So they're not over the top like a lot of uh, backgrounds and foregrounds in 2D platformers, but they are done very nicely in my opinion. Thomas had a new theory. The world was training him. He could feel himself getting smarter. There was the mental list to consider. Over the minutes and seconds since his spontaneous generation, he'd become a pretty skilled jumper. He was evolving. He just wished he had someone to share it with. Poor Thomas, all alone. So, as you may notice in this bit, there's actually momentum in the game. So, I'll sit still here and not push any keys, and as you can see, when the block drops out, the character actually goes up a little bit because the block's moving up before it goes down. And yeah, it's really interesting having that little bit of momentum. It does change things in a game like this. And similarly, I can jump and change my direction in midair. So, so yeah, I can turn back. So yeah, the, the controls do feel very, very smooth. Like, almost impressively so, because a lot of particularly puzzle platformers do feel a little bit clunky. And that is the end of the tutorial world. So don't worry, I'm only going to play a little bit more, because I do not want to spoil this for anyone, but I do want to show you the basics of the game. Chris took an immediate and deep dislike to the skinny red rectangle. Who the hell did this Thomas think he was? So yeah, introducing more characters, and again, it has personality, and as you saw there, uh, you needed to jump Chris onto Thomas to actually Chris finish that level. Doing fine. He wasn't the highest jumper, but he'd held his own. He'd even been graceful at times. Well, not actually, not technically graceful, it's probably, probably the wrong word, but you know, fine. It was that skinny little runt leaping about like he owned the place. So yeah, as I said before, the world is dynamic, and here's a little bit more of that dynamic feel it has going. Oop. And yeah, so the puzzles in this game are mainly about the block interaction. So again, Chris needed to jump on Thomas to get past that because he couldn't jump high enough. And later on, things actually get quite complex. And you just simply swap between the characters using E and Q to cycle through them in opposite directions.
Okay. This was more like it. The glowy white thing. Only Chris could get to it, which of course made it all the more enticing. What would it do? What new opportunity might this switch open up to him? Great, great. Another chance for Thomas to jump slightly higher than Chris. How fortunate. Seriously. This oh, sorry, I cut it off there. But seriously, I love the narration in this game. It's very humorous. It's very enjoyable. Good? Because on the surface, it did not seem good. Chris was pretty scared. Little Red seemed fine, happy to be on his merry little adventure. Chris couldn't shake the feeling that things had taken a significant turn for the worse since Thomas had joined him. Sure, he'd been able to piggyback his way to ever so slightly higher platforms, but where had that got him? Well, to ever so slightly higher platforms, which was sort of his point. <laughs> Bit more humour. So yeah, if you think about it, the characters in this game are just with pure shapes. Hatred. And that's Who it. Seems so very happy at their situation. Friends together, a brave fellowship of quadrilaterals on a quest for greatness. Exactly as said there, they are just quadrilaterals. But it was all the obvious observation that Thomas was doing which grated. Every time they saw something vaguely new, Chris would hear a satisfied little from the vaulting idiot. He hoped the next portal would split them up. If only for a few levels. And yeah, their personalities, which are told by the narrator, really do drive the game. And I don't know about you, but I'm, I find this very, very interesting. Oh, died. Just wait for that to come back. So yeah, with, without the characters' personalities, I honestly don't know if this game would grip me so much. Like, I just want to play it. I want to hear more about these little objects, these little quadrilaterals. And I don't know. Is that weird? Maybe. But it is a lot of fun. And the puzzles are getting progressively harder, adding some jumping puzzles and stuff like that. John knew. He knew that this was his chance. A moment to shine. This was game day. So yeah more characters being introduced and each have their own personality there, their own little name. And puzzles getting slightly more complex. John needed room to show off his exceptional skills. As it was, he was trapped on the wrong side of these little dot things. And the characters do judge Where each they other. Come from anyway. <laughs> And it's just amazingly portrayed by the narrator. So I think I'm going to leave it there, guys. This game is rather short. It's three to four hours, depending on the skill of the player. But it's absolutely amazing. It's a 2D puzzle platformer. And the main focus of the game is the story. And I'll tell you what, it has absolutely drawn me in. The narration is humorous and interesting. It's a huge part of the game, and it's just done so well. And the game has won awards for it. The music suits the game. And it helps to maintain the atmosphere that the game has going. And I mean, it's really chilled. Like, it never really gets exciting, like with the huge drums or anything like that. And it's probably better that it doesn't, because it's just great. Now, unfortunately, the game... The game... Jeez. The game does cost $9.99 if you're in the US or Australia. And £5.99 if you're in the UK. So, some people may think that's a little expensive for a 3-4 to four hour game. But the game does go on sale a lot, particularly during the big Steam sales, and it has been a part of a previous Humble Bundle, so it could be a part of one in the future. So even if this is expensive, a bit expensive for you, if it does go on sale and you're interested in the genre, I'd say pick it up. I mean, it has won awards for a reason. This has been Tommy J, guys. 
Have a good one. <laughs>